What's going on engineers? Now we've learned about HTML tags and how it works, now it's time to pretty up those HTML tags with some CSS. Now although there's over 500 CSS properties, we're only going to look at 20 of them today. And they're the 20 most common ones that you can use to get you probably 90 to 95% of the way done with pretty much any site. This video does assume that you've watched my previous video on HTML tags, so I'm not going to actually explain how the different tags works. If you're not sure how they work, definitely check out the previous video on HTML tags. So let's just get right into it. So the 20 CSS properties we're going to look at are the ones on the screen. Background, border, color, cursor, display, float, font size, style and weight, height and width, top right, bottom left, margin, padding, position, and then text align and decoration. We won't be covering them in the exact orders you see here, but we'll definitely get to each of them as we go throughout this video. For applying actual styles, we're going to be using CSS classes. And CSS classes is basically an identifier like dark. And then inside our CSS, we'll be able to see dark again, but with this period in front of it. And the period is important because the period says, look in the HTML attribute class and try to find an identifier called dark. If you find one, apply the following styles. Which brings us to our very first two properties, background and color. As you can see over here on the screen, I have a dark gray background as the color. So basically background sets the background color and then color sets the text color. Now I don't actually have any text here, so I'll just add something like hello world. When I save it, you can see that it's white text. The value you actually see here is called an RGB hex code. And basically 222 is the same as 222222. The first two characters are going to be the red, the second two characters are going to be the green, and the last two characters are going to be the blue. The lowest value would be 00, zero and the highest value would be FF. And that's going to put it in a range of 0 up to 255. So if we wanted a red background instead of a gray background, we could do FF, which would be 255 red, and then we could do 00, zero which would be 0 green, and then 00, zero, which would be 0 blue. And then when we save it, you can see we get a red background. But that's burning my retinas, so I'm going to set that back to gray. The shorthand version can be used if each set of two characters is the exact same value. So FF0000, zero, 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 which was red, could actually be written as just F00. Zero, zero. If you don't want to worry much about colors, you can actually just use a color wheel, which will let you just basically pick the color you want, and then it'll tell you what it is. So like, if we want an orange, then FAA60A would be that color. So we can plug that in here, FAA60A, and then that'll become the same color from the color picker. To cover the next set of properties, we're going to add a couple tags. So we'll start by adding an H2 with a class of title, and then here we'll put something like chase page. Second one will be a paragraph tag with a class of description, which will contain something like, this page is all about Chase. But that's just boring white text, so let's spruce it up a little bit. So because we have the title class on our title, we can add that here, and then we can define some styles inside it. So first we'll give it some colors, so maybe like a green, so C1FFAD perhaps. So that'll give us a little, little green there. And then for our description, we're going to look at two new properties. First is going to be font style. And font style lets you change the style of the font. Uh, typically italic is what this is used for. So if we set that to italic and save it, you can see that our text is now italic. Second one is text decoration, which also has a bunch of different properties, the most popular of which are line through and underline. So we're going to make this underline as well and then save it. And now we have text that's both underline and italic. And then finally, we want to reduce the gap between our title and the description. This is done with a property called margin. Now, if we use Chrome Console to inspect what's going on here, we can actually see exactly what is what. So the orange is going to show the current margin. So the title has a top and bottom margin. And then our description also has a top and bottom margin. So what we can do is we can reduce the bottom margin of the title and reduce the top margin of the description. So we'll set them both to about five pixels. So for title, we can do margin dash bottom, set to five PX. And then for description, we can do margin top and set that to five PX. And when we save it, you can see that the text goes up and it reduces the gap. And then using Chrome console, we can actually again visually see that it is in fact different. You can see that now that has a much smaller bottom margin and a much smaller top margin. And because the way CSS works, margins will overlap. So if title had a bottom margin of 50 and description had a top margin of 50, that doesn't equate to a 100 pixel gap. It equates to a 50 pixel gap. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put an actual div around our title and description. And we're going to call it, we're going to apply, say, class wrapper. And then the reason we're going to do this is because it's important to understand exactly how blocks are styled, both visually and structurally. 
And as you'll probably notice, nothing changed on the left when I add that div, and that's just because the div is just a rectangle that fills the width of the parent and fills the height of the content and has no other stylistic features until we add them. So for wrapper, we're going to be applying a number of things. We're applying a background, some padding, margin, and border. And then we're going to put some content inside it. Well, actually, there's already content inside it. I'm going to start by applying a background. And the purpose of applying the background first is just so you can see exactly kind of where that box is. So the area that has the green background is the size of that div. Divs by default are block level elements, which means they will attempt to fill the entire width of the parent, and if there's other elements in the way, they're going to push them to the next line. This means that although I didn't write it, if I put display block, this is what the browser is implying already. So if I put display block, nothing changes because it was already display block. That was just an implied style. But what if we don't want to fill the entire parent? We can just change the display type. So rather than it being a block, we can change it to inline block which will mean that it will size to the size of the content, both the height and the width. So essentially what we have now is a wrapper around our title and description. And the reason there's a gap above the title and a gap below the description is because it's taking into account the margin there. So because we're going to look at padding, border, and margin next, we want to make sure that there's no gaps at all. That way we can control all the sizing with those three properties. So to do that for description, we're also going to set a margin bottom of zero. And then for the title, we're going to set a margin top of zero. So every block type element, including inline block, has four parts. It has the content, and then the, the thing that wraps the content is going to be the padding. The thing that wraps the padding is going to be the border, and then the thing that wraps the border is going to be the margin. So we have the content. Let's put a border around the content. This is done with the border property. Now the border property is going to expect that you're going to supply a color, the thickness of the border, and then what style the border is. So we want a white border. So we'll do pound FFF, one pixel solid, and then save. You can see now we have a one pixel white border around our content. The next thing we're going to do is add some padding. Now the padding is going to be between the border and the content using the padding attribute. So if we wanted a 20 pixel padding around every part of the content, we could simply do padding 20px and then save it. Now let's take a second to visualize this. So if I come into my Chrome console and I highlight over wrapper, we can see that there's a green portion, a yellow portion, and the blue portion. So the blue portion is going to be the content, the green is going to be the padding, then the yellow portion is going to be the border. And last but not least, we'll simply add some margin. Now margin happens outside of the box, and that's what makes it different from the padding. The padding happens within the element, the margin happens outside of the element. So we'll do a 20 pixel padding, and then we'll do a 20 pixel margin. And then once again, we'll highlight wrapper just so we can visualize it. So now you can see the margin is shown in orange, the border is shown in yellow, the padding is shown in green, and then the actual content is shown in blue. Now all three of these properties, border, padding, and margin, all support specific border, padding, and margins for the left, top, right, and bottom sides. So if I wanted just the left side to have a white border, instead of doing border, I could do border dash left. And then when I save it, you can see that now I just have a one pixel white border on the left side. This gives you really tight control on exactly what everything should look like. Next, we're gonna look at a positioned element and all of the properties that go along with that. So for that, we'll need our friend chase. For the most part, how things are positioned are based on the order they're defined in the HTML, but there's ways to position it in a way that ignores that entirely. But before we do that, we'll need to make Chase a little bit smaller. So we will introduce two new properties called width and height, which do exactly what they sound like. It will set a fixed width and then a fixed height to that particular element, and you can see that the picture is now smaller. So right now the image is positioned in the same way that text would be positioned. It's just sitting next to our wrapper element. And actually, if we resize the screen down a little bit, you can see that the image goes to the next line. But we're going to set a new position to make this function a little bit different. So rather than position static, which is the default, we're going to set it to position absolute. Now position absolute requires the use of one or more of the properties top, right, bottom, or left. So if I set a position absolute and I set a top of zero and I set a right of zero, then what it does is it puts this picture all the way in the top right hand corner. If I were to change top to bottom, then it would go to the bottom right hand corner. Now it's important to note that this ignores all other elements. So if I were to drag this on top of this box, you can see that it just goes on top of it. It doesn't even care that that box is there at all because it's absolutely positioned. 
Now, the only time when it wouldn't be top zero, right zero is if it got into a scrolling situation. So if the page becomes too short for the content, if I start to scroll, you can see that the image disappears. So this can be changed by simply changing absolute to fixed. Now, absolute and fixed are pretty similar, except in this case, fixed is gonna be based on the viewport. So now you can see when I scroll, the image stays in one spot and the image will always stay exactly where it's positioned. We have a couple more properties to cover. We're just gonna cover them individually. So the next one is going to be text align. And what this basically says is align the text inside an element according to the property value. So if we do text align, you know, center left, justify right. So if we set this to center and save it, you can see that chase page goes into the center. I could also set this to right if I wanted it to be right aligned. And then finally, similar to font style and text decoration is also font weight. And what this dictates is how thick the font is. So if I wanted it to be bold text, I could set the font weight to bold and save it. And you can see that the text got a little bit more bold. And that's really it for some basic CSS properties. Now, it may not seem like much, but you can make pretty much any page with just the stuff you saw on the screen. And in future videos, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna go on the web, we're gonna find things that are made in HTML and CSS, and then we're gonna rebuild them ourselves from scratch just to show the process and how it's built. And what you'll see is we're not gonna stray too far, if at all, from these particular properties. As always, if you have any questions about anything you saw in this video, please leave them below in the comments. And other than that, hope to see you in the next video. Take care.